This is Internet Marketing. Hello, Kelvin Newman here from the Internet Marketing Podcast, brought to you by the team behind Brighton SEO, the world's largest digital search marketing conference that takes place in the UK and the US. You can find out more about the event at brightonseo.com. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about PPC and lead gen. So how you can be using paid advertising in the form of paid search um, to generate leads for your business. Joining me on today's episode, we've got Ethan, Ethan Lambert and Veronica Ruiz. And yeah, they share some really interesting stuff. So let's get stuck in. Hello and welcome again to the Internet Marketing Podcast. As always, I'm joined by two exceptionally talented and interesting guests to talk about a topic that they're specialists in and that I think you, the audience, are going to find really interesting. So today, yeah, we're going to be talking a bit around paid media, paid search, uh, and specifically lead generation as like a a subset of that discipline that I think is a really interesting topic that some of you will be familiar with, some of you it will be very new to you, um, but I think we're going to find some really interesting things out about that space. So yeah, I'll get my guests to introduce themselves um, and tell us a little bit about who they are and their background and how they came to be talking about and working in um, digital marketing and digital advertising. I'll come to you first, Veronica, if that's okay, to get you to tell us a bit about who you are and your background and you know how you came to work in digital advertising. So hello, thank you very much for having me here. Really nice to, to see you in the screen. Um, so yeah, I'm Veronica. Um, I have been working on digital marketing for about 11 years now, uh, specializing on paid media for the last eight years. And I have been working a lot with, um, working with in-house agencies, freelancing with different businesses covering B2B, B2C, D2C, and I have loved using lead gen across all of those um, different businesses and seeing how differently they can work, depending on if you're in B2B, if you're in D2C, how there are a lot of similarities and a lot of uh, things that work differently. So, yeah, a very good, a very advocate of lead gen um, across all types of businesses. <laughs> Fantastic. And Ethan, how about yourself? How, how did you come to, to, to be having this conversation with us here today? Yeah, so I originally got into marketing as I started working with uh, musicians and bands uh, just before all the lovely COVID hit um, around 2018, 2019. And I just ended up falling in love with it. I fell in love with storytelling and user engagement. And I then found myself working for a video company based in Sheffield. And at the time, they weren't really doing much paid media, that type of thing. They were creating all this incredible video content, but not really having much strategy behind it. And I was like, guys, look, we need to find a way to take this into the paid media you know, platforms. It, it's incredible stuff. And from there, I just found my, my next love, which was PPC. It was um, meta marketing. And I would, after working there, I was like, right, I want to expand this. I want to work with bigger companies. I want to see how far we can really take this. Uh, and I moved to Manchester and found this company called Dark Horse. Uh, and all their values aligned with me, and it was, it was really exciting. And ever since I've been working here with some incredible PPC, SEO, and paid media specialists, um, working with all those companies and taking them to the next level through different media contents um, and finding new ways for lead generation companies to really tell their stories and get themselves in front of the right customers. Mm-hmm. And so, Veronica, to kind of come to you first, if that's okay. So lead gen is kind of as a concept, and we're kind of talking about it in the context of paid media and paid search and paid social. Um, How would you define that? And what do you think are kind of some of the key elements um, that, you know, that make a lead generation campaign a lead generation campaign? So I think there are two aspects. And one is what Ethan has just mentioned is that, that storytelling. So... I think a uh, lead gen campaign means that you are telling the story of your brand and it allows you to remove that friction from the very start beginning with the user where the user don't know you, they may not even know the product. So it allows you to guide him to grab the attention and to introduce him to a funnel where you educate the user and introduce the brand, introduce the service 
and explain to them how the service and the brand can help them to improve whatever pain point they have. So I think that that is what will define a lead team very roughly, and that can be applied, as I said before, to any kind of business compared to a more transactional campaign, is that taking the hand of your user and guide them through the process. And do you think that and this is, I suppose, to Ethan as well in here, but do you think that the kind of the clear objective output of like thinking of campaigns as lead gen helps you in the execution? Because I think sometimes the challenge is that, you know, digital advertising as a whole can potentially achieve so many different things. that If you just try and do digital advertising, that almost your, you know, canvas is too big. And actually by kind of going, well, no, we're going to concentrate on lead generation that can help kind of inform that? Is that kind of a, a way of doing that? Or is it like actually people kind of come to you more even with a, well, we want to generate leads, so therefore we're doing lead gen, or is it like actually it comes the other way around on that side? It's, a lot of companies that we speak to, I think they're struggling to find a route into the market and they've created a product or, you know, or service that means so much to them, but they're really struggling to find a way to get that out there. And they're more looking for guidance. And we're saying to them, look, you know, the best way to do this is by working on your lead generation. Because at the end of the day, these people are either business owners or marketing managers. And those business owners really want to help people or they want the freedom to be able to have more money to take their kids on holiday. Or if it's marketing managers, get more, uh, get a bonus because they've got good inquiries into the company. And, you know, if we're going back to how they do it, I think some are so flustered by everything else that's going on especially business owners they've got a million and one things going on they don't have time to think about it mm. they just want to get their story out there and it's that guidance into the ppc into lead generation mm. that we need to give them and how we do that yeah well sorry veronica you were going to say there as well yeah no i was echoing what ethan is saying and how also i didn't how it has to it has to cover everything so where you were seeing you need to start thinking, I'm going to focus on lithium because then that will also guide how you are dealing with other channels. So if you know that you are focusing on collecting leads, then your email campaign marketing is going to be completely different than if you are thinking about um, something much um, uh, um, generic. So it has to, it has to be an objective. I want to reach leads with my campaign and how that is going to transform the other channels and the other campaigns. And I think that's, yeah, that's right, isn't it? That, like whether you're working for an agency or working in-house, kind of thinking about, well, what am I trying to achieve here is like, which sounds a bit glib, but like in a strange way, like the more that you're able to kind of go, well, actually here's precisely what we're trying to do, that narrowing of the kind of, yeah, like it's not to, you know, brand awareness might be good or like, um, you know, transactions might be good, but kind of going, well, no, we just want to kind of like generate, uh, a specific thing and therefore that will then you know you've got your outcome that'll lead to your strategy that'll lead to your tactics that'll lead to kind of the all of the elements we've got there as well so yeah veronica in terms of kind of like paid media what are some of the channels some of the methods that you found that um are useful for you know lead generation in terms of that kind of if using advertising in order to do that what are some of the formats you've you've used in the past that have worked well so it will all depend on and I guess Ethan will agree with me, with the budget that the, the client has. Uh, because depending on the budget, you can you can go wider or, or you have to be more conservative. So if we're talking about um, a low budget, um, what I found very useful is to go straight to Google Ads, Bing Ads, where the intent is already there. Uh, so you are reaching users who have very high intent who may already know that they need you or that they have a, they recognize which problem they have and how they can solve that problem. So Google Ads and Bing Ads is a very good platform for that. The issue you will have is that you cannot scale. So if you have bigger budget, you can, you can start scaling through the funnel and go, okay, I can use paid social, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram to start bringing to start introducing a service and to start telling the user, hey, you may have this problem, you don't know about it, and I have how you can fix it. So depending on your budget, um, you will choose, yes. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of a lot of sense, yeah, what you're saying there is like, 
yeah, thinking about these like paid social and paid search and kind of the level of intent that there might be on those different platforms is slightly different. So therefore the, like the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the effectiveness of the budget might vary or certainly like the sophistication of the campaign might need to be slightly different from someone who's kind of going searching for a product or service you sell versus, a, you know, are primarily, you know, perfectly in the target demographics, but might not necessarily immediately know that one. So one that I really want to pick up on there, Veronica, that I thought was interesting was obviously you mentioned Bing ads as well there. So any kind of particular experience that you've got in terms of why people might want to make use of Bing ads rather than Google? Maybe we've got people who like they do a bit of paid search on Google, but have never really ventured beyond that is it kind of is it quite similar is it cheaper is it more expensive what are some of the reasons why you might bring bing if i'm so you know, writing my words there but yeah bring bing into things yeah i know it's always you forget bing than you uh, <laughs> there is not much volume there but it's cheaper and uh, one of the reasons you may want to use it is i mean there's a few of them one is uh, if you are a b2b business uh you may find that bing gives you better Better options for targeting, as you may be able to target through, to be able to target a job roles or things that Google apps don't have. And another reason I have found it is if if you are targeting the US, uh, it is it's still much lower than Google, but you still have some volume there. And big corporations use um, use Bing, so um, I will say that it doesn't. It doesn't add that much workload uh, to your daily basis, and you can have some incremental wins there. So I always say, why not? Um, it's cheaper, and you may gain you may gain um, some more conversions, some more leads. Uh, yeah, that's really interesting because obviously, like in all of these paid search and paid social, it's an auction, isn't it? You're bidding against other people for that traffic, and yeah, obviously, the fewer people there are, potentially, then the more affordable that might well be. And I suppose there probably are some businesses, and particularly on Legion, we can kind of track through the value. It might well be that like Bing works because it's at a certain threshold, and Google doesn't, right? Because the the the, the cost might be different. And I hadn't really thought about yeah that in that B two B context, if you're kind of going well. Bing being kind of a default on Microsoft devices, maybe it's a little bit more, has a bit more potential in B2B than like B2C, which is interesting. Ethan, are you, do you tend to use paid search? You talked about like Instagram and Meta. Is that kind of more where your kind of um, route into, um, into lead generation through paid media has come? So my, uh, my route is, at the minute is really focusing on YouTube. Um, you know, with Google, we've got really good intent marketing and on Meta, we've got really good interruption marketing. But people always f seem to forget that we can do both of that on YouTube. Uh, you know, it's a platform that people go to learn on, but it's also a platform that people go to be entertained on. And using so many of the capabilities that Google has, like in-market audiences, uh, YouTube placements, channel listings, and all the different demographics that you can get on Meta, we can really home down and find people that we want to advertise to on the platform quite easily. Um, there's a client I'm working with at the minute that has made loads of personalized videos that he's throwing across, across YouTube. And they're working really well because people seem to get to know him before they've even made a phone call. So when they do phone up, they're like, oh, hi, you know, it's, it's, it's this John, I've seen your video. And that connection is already made and they feel way more comfortable speaking on the phone about a problem they're having than if it's just some stranger that they've never met. Mm. I suppose that leans into some of that power of like, like podcasts have an element of this as well, and obviously video does, where it's like and you know vlogging as a kind of format more broadly. Yeah, it's a it's a very personal, right? And there is a you build a connection with these people that you've had the exposure to that's there. And I suppose like potentially producing video might be more daunting, right? So they're like there's the barrier to entry being a little bit higher is maybe a good thing, right? Yeah, I, I would say. One of the biggest, because I do a lot of video content myself, and one of the biggest things that was so difficult to overcome is your own ego. And sometimes you just have to let that go. And, you know, people, if, you're, if people are phoning you up and you're getting on with them, they're most likely going to like you over video. And it's just showcasing yourself in a different way. But there is that element of, oh, I don't want to be on video. I don't want, you know, I, I don't know if I'm, I'm right for that. But sometimes you do have to get through that. And there's so many video companies out there as well that have such a way of making you feel so comfortable on camera and making it like a conversation that you can, it's more than possible to do. And I think that as we progress into the next five to 10 years as, as, as marketing, more people are gonna become active on it because you know things like TikTok is so accessible. Mm. Yeah, and I suppose that's it. And maybe there'll also be a generational thing that obviously people are more accustomed to, they might have, yeah, in a way that maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago or whatever, someone might have 
as a student, as a teenager, have had a blog. Now it's far more likely they might have produced, you know, they might have had a YouTube channel or or at least producing private videos to, you know, their friends and broader network that they're going to feel more comfortable um, doing that. And yeah, I suppose that's it. And in, in a strange way, the foibles or the 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 you know the not necessarily the unprofessionalness, but the kind of the bits where you might feel that are the rough edges are probably that's where the personality is, right? You can you can be too professional, and for a lot of business, that that might not might not be the way to do that. Veronica, in terms of the is video, is it been more kind of traditional paid media? You know, like the text ads, the image ads that you've tended to do there, and any particular things that kind of in the the adverts that you've been producing to get people to a landing page and to become a lead. Is there particular things that you found work well um, that people might want to implement if they're trying to get um, generate leads um, for their business? To be honest, um, you're going to hate this answer, but it depends so much on the company, the product, the user. So, yeah, I can, it, it will depend so much on that. Um, could, yeah, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I suppose that that's it's yeah, it's 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 true, right? Isn't it? Is that what will work for one business and organisation doesn't necessarily mean it will work for another, right? And that's continues to be a surprise for me. There's like, okay, you could take the paid media, like a paid social campaign from one business, um, export it, import it into another business, and that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work, right? And I suppose that's good for us as marketers to remember sometimes, right? Is that the unique combination of the individuals the business the brand the targeting um it doesn't necessarily i suppose that's what makes it interesting right definitely yeah it, it's come back, it always come back to the constant testing and then you have an idea and you have to test it and you're right it could not work for that particular business and actually what it works is completely the opposite mm. so yeah and so obviously kind of like with lead gen you know maybe incorrectly i kind of think a lot of it's like okay you're doing some really well targeted adverts that have got a really good message in them. We talked about storytelling. You're getting them through to your website and then you're trying to like get them to complete an action. Is there kind of any like, you know, that landing page optimization? Is that a big part of lead gen? Is it like, well, actually, if you've done the steps before that, it's less important? Or even how do you find that kind of like process of once you've got them on your website, have you done already most of the work? Or do you actually, is there particular things you should be looking for or considering when you've got people through to your website? Yeah, I, I I always say this. I think, especially when it comes to PPC, people forget the website is still like 90% of the work. But your advertisements are 10% of just getting you there. But if your website isn't keeping up with with everyone else's and your competitors, you're never going to get the same conversion rates or inquiries that they are. Um, fundamentally, at the end of the day, people need to tell a story. And when you're writing your website, you need to do that. It's who you are. It's your USPs your reviews it's your testimonials and so many people just leave it off their website because they just want to get just you know just inquire just inquire but there's a whole other element to a landing page and to websites that people are forgetting mm. and i suppose veronica that's quite important from the like the success of the adverts as well right so you've got quality score and elements like that as well is there you know is, is that something that people need to be bearing in mind yeah definitely like um it it has to be it all has to be working together. It has to be, you need to be using, uh, you mentioned it quite this way, you have to be using similar keywords, similar messaging. So the landing page is relevant to your ads and it all feels like a seamless process. So for Google ads, your ads will be cheaper because your quality score is better as the landing page is relevant to your ad. And then for the user, as you can say, is it all makes sense. Like the story makes sense. Um, yeah. Cool, fantastic. So I think that's given a real, real whistle stop tour of kind of what is I know a really big topic, and we could probably have done you know, you know, an hour on each of the different aspects of that as well. But I think hopefully that'll get people excited about lead gen and um, and we're using paid media to do that and some of the broad areas they'd want to do. One of the questions I always like to kind of ask people to do is like, so if they've enjoyed today's episode, um, and there's perhaps more that they'd like to learn, or it doesn't even need to be directly to do with today's episode. But is there any particular resources, Ethan, that like you say, you know? Um, here's something I'd recommend as a listener that, uh, or viewer of today's show um, that you'd say, hey, here's the Ethan endorsed thing that people should go and check out next on the internet. Yeah, I mean, there's two guys I'd highly, re highly recommend checking out. Uh, there's an American advertiser called Russell Brunson. He owns a company called ClickFunnels. Um, he's got some incredible stuff on how lead generation companies can take themselves to the next step using funnels across websites, but also tailoring different ad copies to really resonate with your audience and understanding that. 
Uh, and then my second guy is a guy called Mike Rose, who really specializes in PPC. And he has some fantastic scripts out there that you can use on your ad console. But also, if you just want to keep up with what's going on within Google Ads, because obviously at the minute it's changing every single day with demand gen and performance max, and whatever else is throwing at us. And he's there on it every single time showing you what's going on so you can stay stay ahead of the game. Yeah, I think that's interesting. You know, as a kind of like observer and kind of a bit more of a natural search person rather than a pay search person. It's like, yeah, so, but I'm doing it often enough that like, yeah, every time I get back involved in supply me, it's moved on a lot in the two months or three months since I last was kind of doing that. And I suppose obviously that's what makes it exciting. And, and Veronica, any particular recommendations for um, additional resources or places people might like to check out? Uh, I'm going to echo Ethan with Mike Rhodes. He is amazing and his scripts yeah. are a lifesaver. So yeah, check, yeah, check on him. And then in terms of paid search, um, I would recommend PPC Live. Okay, it, um, it has a very good uh, blog where different experts talk about different topics related to paid search. And they also run, it has been monthly or every three months, an event in London. So I would recommend that because it gives you very good insights about PPC and um, what's going on there. Yeah, I think Annie's events are really great as well. And I think they've also got a WhatsApp group that I've joined recently as well that's like really yeah. like incredibly active as well, yeah. which is obviously like, yeah, those kind of private messaging or groups or Slack groups or that sort of thing. It definitely feels like there's, yeah, that pretty much yeah, every sector said, there's changed, ones of those. Yeah. Yeah. Not on a daily basis, but yeah, on a monthly basis. So they are great because they can... If there is something new, they will WhatsApp you like, hey, this is new. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> yeah you, we're all in the same boat, right, of dealing with these kind of challenges. And yeah, sometimes even just knowing that everyone else is equally overwhelmed is sometimes good to know in terms of bits as well. <laughs> so, um, uh, Veronica, in terms of like people keeping in contact with you or seeing your work, is there a kind of particular like social network you use or website for them to check out to kind of keep up with um, yourself and what you're up to? So I mainly use LinkedIn and uh, then you can also find my website. So anyone wants to keep in contact, um, DM me, and yeah, it would be nice to talk to everybody. Fantastic. <laughs> so we'll leave links to that in the show notes for anyone who's kind of like on their various platforms. I know like some people will be on YouTube, some people will be on Spotify. And they'll be in the various places where they share those those bits there as well. How, how about yourself, Ethan? Yeah, I mean, LinkedIn, to be honest with you, um, I'm on there daily just talking in the community. It's lovely stuff. Uh, and also, obviously, our website as well, darkhorse.co. Um, there's a great team here that are always responding to questions. Um, so, yeah. Amazing. Well, thanks both for your time today. I hope everyone's really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, big fan of both our, our, our guests today's work. So definitely keep an eye out on what they're up to. And, yeah, thanks so much for them for uh, um, being in today's show. And thank you to listen or watch or however you're consuming this media content. Uh, thank you for doing that. And we will see you again soon in future episodes. So thanks very much, everybody, and see you soon. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Internet Marketing Podcast, produced by the team behind Brighton SEO, the world's largest specialist digital marketing conference covering SEO, PPC, paid social, web analytics, and content marketing. If you want to find out more about us and the show, you can check out the website, internetmarketingpodcast.org. And if you've um, not already subscribed to the show, you should hit that subscribe button. And can I ask a favor if you are subscribed and you're enjoying the show, can you leave us a review wherever you're watching or listening to the show? And if you want to get in touch, um, become a guest on the show, or just generally feedback about what we're doing, you can always email me. That's kelvin at brightonseo.com. So K-E-L-V-I-N at brightonseo.com. Or of course, you can contact me on social media. So at LinkedIn or Twitter, uh, my username's R. Kelvin Newman. See you soon.